God bless you, everyone. Praise the Lord. Thank God for you. And thank God for you, your support. I appreciate it. Bless you. I thank God for all of my friends out there. You're all of my friends. If you help support me and pray for me, you're my friends. And I really do appreciate you. So we thank God for another day and, and another year. And I'm praying for all of those here in California who lost loved ones and the flood everywhere and you know different type of things happen everywhere we are praying for you all some lost loved ones some are going to be remained i'm praying for you i pray for everyone that i see have a need of prayer we all have a need so god bless you last week we talked about um the book of daniel daniel chapter 2 or nebuchadnezzar forget his dreams i mean we all have dreams and we forget them sometimes and he forgot his dreams. He dreamed a great dream, which he could not remember. He tried hard. He called for the magician and the soothsayer from all over Babylon, the Chaldees and Egypt. Nobody could interpret his dream. But God of someone, that the God of heaven, that he might know that he is a God of heaven who rule over man, who have authority, who made man, and hold the breath in their nostril. But before we go into the second book of Daniel and the 14th chapter, let us go to the throne of grace. Are you sick today? Are you troubled? Are you forgot, forgotten your dreams when you're troubled? Are you sick in your body? We all have affliction going through sometimes. There's none that do not go afflict, through affliction in this life. So today you might be going to one of your worst time, bereavement, whatever it is, last loved ones, let's go to the throne of grace. And we are praying for a country. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we are praying right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we give honor and holy reverence to your name, God. All honor and glory belongs to you, Jesus. We bless your mighty name. We bless the mighty God of heaven and earth. Lord, we come to pray and to seek your face, O oh God, for our country and much disaster going on all around us. But you said in the last days, these things will happen. There's war, rumors of war, there's famine and pestilence. As we see it appear upon the earth, Lord Jesus, we stand in the holy place to give your name the glory and praise because the mighty God of heaven is at work at all times. So Lord, we are praying for all our leaders, all those in authority, all our president, vice president, Oh, God, Jesus, remember everyone, Lord Jesus, in their respective place, Lord, from the CIA, the police department, the congressmen and women. Oh, God, everyone, Lord Jesus, that do great work in this country, we are praying for them. We are praying for all our farmers, our doctors, our nurses. Oh, God, our truck driver carry food to the stores. Everyone in their respective place, Lord, 911 crews, we thank you for them, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, everyone, Lord Jesus, that need prayer today, we are praying for them, Lord. Our doctors that work so hard in the emergency room sometimes, oh God, they never cease to be there for us. We appreciate them, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We are praying for the health, Lord Jesus. We are praying for the health of those, Lord Jesus, who do all of this great work, Lord, that they might continue. We are praying for those who are sick right now in their body. Some are sick in their mind. Some are sick in their body. Whatever you're going through right now, we pray that the mighty God of heaven, the mighty power of the Holy Spirit, might touch your body right now, mind, soul, and body, that you might be healed right now. In the name of Jesus, your heart right now is beating so fast right now. You believe that you're having a heart attack. We rebuke that sickness in your body right now. We rebuke that kidney condition, that heart condition, that lung condition that breathing for condition right now. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your healing power to touch those who are sick and afflicted in the mind, soul, and body right now that somebody might be healed, somebody might be saved and set free right now. And we thank you, Lord, for touching them now in Jesus' name. Amen. Give God the praise. If you have a condition in your body, believe God. You believe will heal you. If you believe that God is a healer, you will be healed in Jesus' name. Let's go now to the book of Daniel with me, to Daniel chapter 2 and verse 14. As we talk about the forgotten dream last week, and God of a man named Daniel, who had the wisdom of God in him, and, and God used him mightily 
to interpret the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. Sometimes you might have dreams and you might not understand your dreams. Go to God. If you don't know him, call upon his in name and he will remind you of the dream in due time. Otherwise, he'll send somebody, a Daniel, to interpret your dream. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 14. Let's go to the, the 12th verse. And he said, For this cause, the king was very hungry and furious and commanded to destroy all the men of Babylon, all the Babylonian, and all the soothsayers, and all the wise men of Babylon, and the Chaldees to Egypt. They captured Egypt too. Because Egypt, Nebuchadnezzar was a king over the whole world. And he killed who you want to kill. If you don't like, you kill you. If you just heard you say something, what you don't like, he kill you. Because you think the rules what they have and that you lay down and the laws of the land. That's what works. And you can debate and say you don't work that way, he'll kill you. So whatever the king say must work. So he decided he ordered all the king and the witch and the warlock and the wise men that he called them of Babylon. Since they can't interpret the dream, he ordered them to be killed. No, Daniel wasn't, was Daniel and the three Hebrew boy, they were supposed to be killed too. So when Daniel heard about it, he said, I, I must see the king. I'm going to see the king. I have to see him. And he asked for time to pray. I need some time to pray and to seek the Lord. So the, so the king, the, the, the wise men, Verse 14, then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom. He answered to the king commander with counsel and wisdom. And he said, I have to see the king. Verse 15, then he answered and said to Ariak, the king captain, why are you so hasty? Why are you hasting? To kill all of those. He said the king commanded me to kill all of them. Because they do not answer to his dream like he want to. They said to the king, there's no man on earth that could understand a, a vision, a dream, unless it showed to them. And no man ever hacks something like this. So the king said, okay, you, you're counseling me. You're my counselor. I don't have a counselor. I'm going to kill everyone. But Daniel asked for time. I must see the king. I must go in to see the king to ask for some time. So they let him go in and see the king. And when he asked for some time, it was granted. The Bible said we have not because we ask not. So since Daniel asked for counseling and time, the king gave it to him. And then he is going to show the king the dream. Verse, verse 15, verse 16. Then Daniel went in and desired time. Verse 17. Then Daniel went, in, <coughs> went into his house and made this thing known to his brethren. He said, let's pray. Let's seek the face of the Lord. You know, sometimes we don't have what we need from God. We only ask. We need to seek the face of the Lord in consecration. Daniel went down in prayer and fasting with his, with his brethren. And in the middle of the night, God revealed the dream to Daniel. You know, that's what we must do. This is an example of a Christian. This is an example of a person who know who the king is, who their God is. But when we don't know him, then we don't seek God. We, we seek the wise men. We seek the witchcraft, the witchcraft workers, the warlock, whose God is not in the heaven, but in the hurt. They're going, Daniel seek a God which is in heaven. Because the wise men said to the king, we cannot... Interpret this wisdom, this vision, 
because you don't show the, the vision. The God that needs to interpret your vision is not dwelling among us. He's dwelling in the heaven. We don't know him. We can't talk to him. So since we can't talk to him, we cannot interpret the dream. They can't talk to God. They don't know him. You have to be introduced to God. And God will introduce himself to you. You know, your God is either, is, is either the God of the devil or the God of heaven. And whom do you serve? The God of the hurt doesn't do anything to you. Because he's the devil. And then Daniel went into his house and they prayed. Verse 18. That he would desire, that he would desire from God the secret of his vision. And when Daniel received the vision, he said, the secret was revealed to Daniel, verse 19. Yeah, the secret was revealed to the Daniel, to Daniel. But this is how Daniel approached the king. He didn't just go in and say, King, I got a vision. I got the vision. I got it. No, he didn't show anything to himself. He showed the reverence and honor to God. The way Daniel answered this in wisdom, we should learn. And verse 18, then, then was the secret revealed to Daniel in the night, in the night season. And Daniel answered and said, bless, he blessed the Lord of heaven. He praised the Lord of heaven. When God give you anything, some of us ask for financial blessing, whatever we need, and we don't bless the God of heaven. We just go and show each other what we have and who, how great we are. When Daniel received it, he first blessed God and gave God thanks for his good and his mercy is endured forever. His mercy to save their lives. And verse, verse 20, and Daniel answered and said, he blessed the God of heaven, verse, nine, verse 21. And he, he is a God that changed time and everything upon the earth. And he is a God that gives knowledge. He is a God that gives wisdom and understanding. So I praise him and bless his name. He revealed it secret and he revealed it the deep secret and the things. He revealed it the deep and secret things. Only God can reveal that. The deep things, the secret things that belongs to God. Only he can reveal it. How much we trust in God to know the secret things of the word. There are some things that the word we still don't know. It's our secret. The word of God is our secret. We have to go to him in secret. He give it. He give it knowledge. And he show the things that happen in the light as much as in the darkness. The, Lord, the eyes of the Lord is in every place. He see the things of the hurt. The darkness and the light are just the same to him. So when he reveals the things of the hurt to us, you have pleasure in Daniel. You have pleasure in revealing these things. Because we can't know them of ourselves. You see, Daniel requested time. If any man lack wisdom, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, Proverbs 8, Proverbs chapter 8. If any man lack wisdom, let them go to God. The God of our wisdom and knowledge and understanding. He said, when wisdom enters into the heart, and knowledge is pleasant into your soul, understanding shall guide you. Understanding shall guide you. And wisdom shall keep you. The wisdom of God. The Bible said in, in Proverbs chapter 8, wisdom. We need wisdom. Wisdom is a thing that we need. And when wisdom enters into your heart, understanding. This is the God of all wisdom and knowledge and understanding. What shall guide us? Some of us don't seek God. That's why we don't have the wisdom that we need. Okay, let's go to the word. And I thank God. He, he, go, to the, he go to the king and said, I thank God for revealing these things to me. I praise the God of heaven. 
verse 23. He said, I praise the God of heaven who revealed the deep things to me, the wisdom of God, that he might make known to me the things that I desired of him. Verse 34. Therefore, Daniel went into the king. Now he's going into the king to reveal the secret things. And he said, no king. No king, I receive this from you. It's not from man, but from God. And I come to tell you that there's a God that reveals secret. It's not all about the, 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 man, the mighty men of Babylon. But there's a God of heaven. There's a God in heaven that reveals deep things, that reveals secret. No man on earth could do it. No man could do it. But when I go to God, he reveal it to me, Dan, King. O oh, King, live forever. He said, then Hazariah brought Daniel into the king. Verse 25. And he said, I have found the, of the captive. They call him the captive of Israel. He said, King, I have found the captive of Israel here. And the king said, what have you have to say then? It's 20, 26. Then the king answered and said, Oh, Daniel, the call him Belsager, 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 and he said, are you able to make this thing known to me? Daniel said, yes, O king, live forever. 27, verse 27, and he answered and said, in the presence of the king, and he said, but there is a God of heaven who reveal its secret and make known to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, what shall be hereafter upon the hurt and the, the, the vision of your, of your head, what you have on your bed. Here is the interpretation. Now this interpretation didn't come from man king, but there's a God of heaven. He first witnessed to the king. He didn't just show him the dream. He used the wisdom of God that of all the things that you have done, there's a time, King, when you're going to face God. There's a time that you have on earth here, everyone, when you're going to find yourself between the rock and the hard places. You're going to find yourself facing God. You're too much of yourself sometimes. There are people that so much of yourself they all about money, they all about everything. But there's a time when man face the rock on the hard places. There's a time when you're going to face a thing when doctors say they can't do anything more for you. It's you and God. There's a time when you're going to find yourself in prison. And all the money and all the wisdom and all the fame that you have, it doesn't do nothing to you. Money means nothing to you. When friends won't be friends anymore, you find yourself between four walls and a folding bed and maybe I come out. No matter how you're rich, no matter how much money you have, you can't do anything for you. You're going to take God. When you face the rock on the hard places, when you find yourself in a place where you can't even turn, turn around too much and you're going to live there, that's your home. So the king find himself in a place where you have to face God. There's a time when man have to face God in hell and they, they can't move. So it's wise to seek the Lord of, at all times, to seek the wisdom of God, to seek to know God. So this man don't know who God is. He think he's a God. He kill when he want. He do what he want. And when he faced with the dreams and the vision, he said, Daniel, God is the God. But did he serve him afterward? Or did he make image of that? He make a fool of himself after he get to know God. Because some people, when they know God, they don't worship him as God. They worship him with like some kind of image, like Nebuchadnezzar. They worship God like he's something else. <coughs> They make a image, he make a image out of his dream. So when they know God, 
They don't worship him as God. Some people say they go to church, they go to the house of God. I didn't learn anything. Some people have religion, like Nebuchadnezzar. He got religion, but he don't know God. But when he do, it was introduced to God, then he said, Daniel, God is the real God of heaven. Did he serve him? Did he turn from his sins? No, we got to see the image that he make after the dream. And he said, but there is a, but there, oh God, but there is a God in heaven that revealed a secret and make it known to the king. Nebuchadnezzar, there's a God that revealed secret. There shall be, what, he will tell you what shall be. This dream will tell what shall be in the latter end. He will tell about the latter end and the things to come to pass in the book of Revelation. These things that you see now, they are in the future. I'm going to tell you the dream, but there are future things that will come to pass. These things will come to pass in the book of Revelation. When we get the interpretation of this dream, it's going to come to pass in the book of Revelation. He so said, I will tell you the dream, but there are future things. Verse 29. As for the whole king, Though taught by night, they came unto thee by night in the midst upon thy bed, that it should come to pass hereafter. These things will be hereafter. The, the word hereafter means later on. They'll come to pass. It is prophetically portrayed in the course of the world empire. Is a world empire thing and it's destruction by Christ. It will be in the world empire and it, 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 it will be in destruction by Christ. It's called the period of the Gentile. The things you're seeking is called the period at when the, the Gentile are going to destroy Jerusalem. And, you, and the dream, I'm going to tell you the dream, but I'm going to tell you the interpretation later on. That is called the world empire. Well, and it's going to destroy all Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is going to be trodden on their feet. And this is the meaning of the dream and interpretation. It prophetically portray the course of time. The times of the Gentile in the tribulation. Now these things are going to come to pass. There are terrible things ahead. And this is a warning. And in the, in the next time, we're going to tell you how Nebuchadnezzar reacted to this dream. You see a great image and the different things about the image and the different parts of the image showing what the world is going to be like and what Rome is going to be like and how Rome is going to be destroyed and how the image is going to be destroyed and Jesus is going to be that great stone that breaks them in pieces. This is the interpretation of the dream. When, when, the, when the image breaks in pieces, when the devil image breaks in pieces, when all the things of the world are going to break in pieces, and God is going to be king of king and lord of lord upon the earth, and how Jerusalem is going to be like Saddam destroyed and broke up, broke up in pieces. And he's going to tell you how all of these things are going to take place in the book of Matthew and in Luke 21. So it is a readiness for man that your heart should be ready when you see all these things come to pass, when we see all these things coming to pass upon this earth, when we see all the persecution at the church, the church is going to be persecuted and it starts in Israel. We see it in different parts of the world. Our Christians have been killed from India to different from Africa to different parts. But the real persecution started in Israel. We're going to see it here in America. We're going to see persecution like never before. And the Bible says when we see all this persecution and all these things come to pass, stand in the holy places. As we read in the book of Daniel, stand in the holy place with your line girded about with shoot. Because we know in the last days, some people complain about a little persecution. 
We're going to big persecution. Now the church, not going to go through the major tribulation, but we're going to go through a light tribulation, what we call light tribulation, what God call light, and we think it's not light. We're going to go, when we see some things coming to pass, when we see the Antichrist in Revelation chapter 4 and in Revelation chapter 6, where the Antichrist stand out. But we see the Antichrist come on the earth and demands worship. We know the time is at hand. There are many Antichrists, but the main Antichrist, when we see some things, kingdom begin to fall. When we see China start taking over some countries, and some countries going to swallow up another country, they must remain strong because they're going to great persecution upon the church. And the little country can't stand. So the big one going to swallow them up. And their armies, armies going to be prepared for armies. And the last time, and the last days, the Eastern Army is going to be Eastern and Western, Northern Army. That's how we're going to be. And we see them right now. We see some wars right now. We hear about some rumors of war. We hear about some, some that think they are strong. But God is in control. So let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Stand firm in the strength of the Lord, in the word. Stand on the word. Don't worry about persecution. The Lord said, let not your heart be troubled. Because these things must come to pass in the last days. The hurt must come to an end. But God is patient. God is merciful. So many years that Daniel received all of these visions and dreams. It's a long time. And God said there are future things. But in the New Testament, when Jesus come, when Jesus come, the tempter's power must be broken. When Jesus stepped down and hurt, all the tempter's power going to be broken. And it begins in Jerusalem. It's going to be trampled on the feet by the Gentiles. And God going to secure those who is going to secure to preach the gospel in the tribulation. As kind of Revelation chapter 7. Let not your heart be troubled. It's hard for your heart not to be troubled. When you see your loved ones going to hell. When you see some people who do not serve our God. Is heaven or hell? You know, I heard somebody say, are you going to heaven or not? But I'm asking you today, where are you going to spend eternity? If Jesus should say right now, this night, your soul is required of him. Where are you going to spend eternity? You got one soul to be saved. God give us life. He give us mercy to see another day. But if you should die right now, where would you spend eternity? You know, the Bible talks about the marriage feast, uh, the marriage supper of the Lamb. When we're going to be with Christ. He talks about it in the book of Matthew. And he talks about it in Revelation. The marriage supper of the Lamb. In Revelation 20. That we're going to be with Christ. The marriage and hurt shows we marriage we're going to have with Christ. Now, sometimes it seems like we have no marriage. Some people say they love today, hey, tomorrow. But Jesus loves at all times. We're going to be in marriage supper with the Lamb, in union with Christ. He said, are you going to be in union with Christ? Walking up the king's highway? Are you going to be burning in fire forever? And discontent and heat forever? Would you rather be with Jesus forever? I want to tell you that Jesus loves you. And if you're not going to heaven with Christ, you're going down to the fire. Where are you going to spend eternity? Heaven or hell? It's not heaven or not. Heaven or hell? I'm here to warn you of the consequences of hell and the lake of fire. That Jesus said if you repent and call upon his name and you should die, you will have eternal life. Today I'm warning you today. I want to see you in heaven when I get there. I want to be hugging you in heaven when I get there. Repent. Ask him to come into your heart. Ask him to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from every sin, every unrighteousness. And if you are willing to confess your sins, I'm going to pray with you right now. Because somebody prayed for me one day. Somebody have me on their mind and pray that God might have mercy upon me. 
and I yield myself to the tender embrace of the Holy Spirit. And I'm saved by his grace. You can save, you can have eternal life. Because we are all born in sin and shaped in iniquity and guilty of sin. Let's go to the throne of grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, I've sinned, Lord. I've come short of your glory in every way. Wash me from my sins. Cleanse me from my sins. Give me hope of eternal life. Lord, I surrender my life to you. I surrender my life, Lord. Have mercy upon me, Lord. And wash me from my sins. And receive me, Lord, as your child. And let me to know that I have eternal life. In Jesus' name. Now, if you have received Jesus, go read the book of John. And see, oh God, forgive sins. And he will cleanse you and teach you his ways. Find yourself a good church and a good pastor. Amen. See you in heaven. Thank you, Pastor Carter.